Hey From Family, we only have one more episode left and things are going absolutely crazy in From Town. And if I have to hear one more person say we're all going to die, I'm going to shoot myself. That's right, we're almost at the end, but there is still so much to talk about. For those of you new to these videos, this is not a recap, rather a breakdown of all the new theories, mysteries, and clues from the latest episode. I've left timestamps below so you can see all the topics I'll be covering. Now secure your talismans, night is upon us. Last episode left us with Reggie screaming for help. You may remember he and Paula took over Sarah's place after she murdered her brother. Paula has seemingly been killed from the inside out, with Reggie claiming that something cracked from within her. But before she died, she kept repeating the same thing over and over again in her sleep, the same rhyme Kenny heard at the beginning of episode 8. They touch, they break, they steal, no one here is free. This is our first confirmation of a death via sleep. Previously, Elgin and Kenny had experiences of their dreams creeping into the real world, but nothing to this extent. And I gotta say, Paula's body looks mutilated just like how the monsters would kill their victims. The nursery rhyme is also what Elgin remembers from his dream. He spent most of the season trying to remember what it was, and only when Fatima tells him that she's pregnant does it trigger something inside of him. Elgin, however, tells them it was a boy dressed in white who said this rhyme, which leads me to believe it's the boy in white from season one. Now, if you go to IMDb, the actor who plays him is credited as being in the season two finale, but take that with a grain of salt because IMDb can often be wrong. From what we know, the boy in white seems to be a good character, helping Boyd and Sarah at the end of season one. If he's saying this rhyme, it's likely a clue to help them. Last episode, we saw a swarm of cicadas hovering over the dead body of Smiley, only to disappear a few moments later. In this episode, they become a legitimate threat. Almost every scene outdoors, you can hear them. But we can't be sure that these cicadas are real. Marielle sees them, but Christy doesn't. Julie is seemingly attacked by them, but no one else can see them. Randall, too, is attacked, but he's the only one out there, so we can't be certain if that's in his head or not. I'm also curious if this is the last time we'll see Randall. I doubt it because we see Mariel and Julie attacked and they still seem to be alive. We also see these cicadas enter into his mouth and it makes me wonder if Randall might come back as one of those monsters. After all, with Smiley dead, does the town need someone new to take his place? Sarah also posits an interesting theory about the insects, stating that her brother Nathan thought cicadas were monsters. What if the fears of the people who died here became part of the forest? I don't 100% buy this yet, but it is something interesting to think about. Now, Marielle and Julie are attacked by these cicadas, but it appears only they can see them. Marielle's eyes turn gray and is put into this sort of catatonic state. It can be assumed then that Julie and Randall will end up this way too. I wonder if they'll have a limited amount of time to save them before they turn into that woman from the beginning of the episode. You may have also seen that winter is coming. We can see our character's breath in the cold weather. A few episodes ago we learned from Victor that the town had been in a perpetual state of summer, but something has changed. This seems to have started with the death of Martin, leaving no bodies chained up in that building Boyd found in episodes 1 and 2. If you haven't seen my video last week, I go into full detail about how the nursery rhyme connects to three of our characters, Kenny, Elgin, and Marielle, and to these three chained prisoners from earlier in the season. But with Marielle, Julie, and Randall being sworn by cicadas, maybe this mysterious power has other plans. Not only has the weather changed, but Sarah notes that the town feels different now, that it feels wrong, stating that it feels like how the forest did when she and Boyd traveled there far away. Something seems to have been holding a darker force at bay from the town, but now all bets are off. Something needs to change, and it appears the nursery rhyme is the clue. Midway through the episode, we see Boyd cover his bullets in Smiley's bile, with the theory that since this bile was mixed with the worms that killed Smiley, maybe it will kill the other monsters too. But it doesn't look like that's the case. We'll see Boyd shoot several of the monsters and it seems to have no effect. It'll be disappointing if this bile amounts to nothing. Perhaps it could be used to cure Marielle, Julie, or Randall. And just a reminder, if you like these types of videos, be sure to like and subscribe. Every little bit helps the channel. The episode is titled Ball of Magic Fire, a reference to Ellis and Christie's chat about how easy we believe crazy things if they become common. 
common. If you think about it, the idea of birth is crazy. A totally new person is created from seemingly nothing. But since it happens so frequently, we don't think about it. The same is true with the ball of magic fire known as our sun. Our planet hurdles tens of thousands of miles per hour through space around a giant ball of fire. That's insane, yet we perceive it as normal. It becomes a metaphor for the crazy things in the town itself. They seem crazy, but become normal. This meshes with Jade's chaos theory that he mentioned last episode. While every weird thing that happens in town may seem disconnected, it's all part of a beautiful plan. This episode also provides some more insight into Eloise's drawings. Last episode, we learned that Victor had a sister who drew pictures that came from stories her mother used to tell. Some of the pictures include an angry large person with happy people around it, a faraway tree, a person, perhaps a monster, coming through a doorway, and a happy person here while everyone else is sad. Jade also recognizes the Civil War soldiers he saw back in Season 1. Does that mean that Victor's mom's stories are somehow manifesting in real life? Victor will later recite something his mom used to say that everything is a story and we're the ones who get to decide how it ends. The most important drawing, however, seems to be this one of the lighthouse, something Boyd and Sarah saw at the end of Season 1. Tabitha has also had dreams about this lighthouse. Combine this with her being haunted by ghost children, she's finally clued in that maybe the these children need her help. After all, Victor said his mother was off to the lighthouse to save the children. Only when they're saved can they make it out of town. One of the things I like about Victor, but is also frustrating, is that I'm never sure if he knows more than he's letting on. He'll tell Ethan that a mass killing event like what happened to him as a child won't happen again. Is he merely trying to ease Ethan's fears, or does he know something that we don't? The music box is at it again, or should I say it's melody over the radio. While Boyd, Donna, Jim, and Randall are cooped up in the RV, it seems to hold the monsters at bay. But as we learn from Martin in episode 2, once the music stops, bad things happen. There's also the added WTF moment of banging coming from beneath them. How is that even possible? There's nothing there. If that wasn't crazy enough, we have Boyd's dead wife making a visit telling him to quote, come back to me. This would imply she wants Boyd to die so they can be together. Sarah is fed up with life and plays a game of Russian roulette. This is clearly a woman who's on the edge, and I wouldn't be surprised if she does something drastic next episode. Was her surviving the gun luck, or did whatever powers that be have a hand? And lastly, I want to bring up Tilly and how she somehow knew Fatima was pregnant. This isn't the first time Tilly has known something that was a secret. She knew in episode 4 that Boyd had been on a quote-unquote adventure, but it's possible she could have learned that from another townsperson. I think something is up with her. I don't know what, but I got my eyes on you, Tilly. Those are all the big topics I wanted to cover, so now I turn it over to you. What do you think will happen in the season finale? Leave your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember... Every one of you is gonna get him out of here now!